Thank you all so much. Justin was amazing. I love the last part about finding a niche you can rap about. I'm like, could I rap about deliverability? I bet I could, but I'm not gonna do it right now. That would not be good. But I will start today by telling you a story. This is a true story about a creator. I am gonna change her name, so let's call her Sam. And Sam is a creator with a thriving online business. She sells courses to photographers. And over the years, she's grown her list from zero to over 50,000 subscribers. Email is the backbone of her business. It's how she pays the bills. It's how she makes a living. So one day, just a normal day, she logs in to check her stats and sees that her open rate has plummeted. She thinks, oh, probably a bad subject line. I'll keep going. But send after send, the open rates are way down and revenue is way down. Course registrations are at an all-time low, and she's starting to feel nervous. <laughs> Subscribers are writing to her saying, your emails are going to my spam folder. What's going on? She starts doing some digging and confirms Gmail is placing every single message in the spam folder. Oh, scary. Um, and then she starts to do some research. She starts Googling, how can I fix this? She starts to do some of the things she's reading on Google, and none of it's helping. Imagine, just take a minute. All your emails are going straight to spam and nothing is helping. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel a little panicked. And uh, here's a screenshot from Sam's Google Postmaster tool. So spoiler alert, I was able to connect with Sam and we got her taken care of. We worked together on her deliverability and improved her reputation at Gmail tremendously. So this is a screenshot from her Google Postmaster tools showing her domain reputation with Gmail. It started at what Gmail actually calls bad, it's lower than low, and got all the way back up to high. Emails went back to the inbox, her revenue recovered. It's a happy ending, but still a very stressful time for Sam. And unfortunately, stories like this happen to creators all the time. I'm sure some people in this room, unfortunately, have had deliverability issues. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger has been there. I will never forget this tweet because I was having a relaxing Sunday morning, just made some coffee, chilling on the couch, probably watching Bravo. But I receive a DM from Nathan Barry saying, Arnold Schwarzenegger needs your help. <laughs> <laughs> I've never felt cooler. And don't worry, we fixed it right away. I was able to help him get him straightened out. Uh, that was fun. So whether you're Arnold Schwarzenegger just getting started or somewhere in the middle, this is information you need to know. We made sure to talk about deliverability on the main stage because it's so important. ConvertKit's mission is to help creators earn a living. And for many creators, email is the main source of your income. This is why deliverability deserves a keynote. And this is why I do what I do each day. We made sure to put it on the main stage so that you have the tools you need to stay out of the spam folder before it's too late, but also to know where to turn if you do need help. So in case we haven't met yet, hello. My name is Alyssa, it's nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here talking with you about deliverability. Like Haley said, I was a little like, uh, but I'm here, I'm happy, that's great. Um, so, you know, ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of helping creators get their emails to the inbox. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously, but I am really passionate about deliverability. I lead the deliverability team at ConvertKit and we send over two billion emails per month. And my job is to make sure those emails get to the inbox. No pressure. At ConvertKit, we take deliverability extremely seriously. My team is working hard in the background 24 seven to make sure you have the best foundation for sending and the highest level of deliverability support if you need it. You might not know this, but part of the work my team does is stopping spammers before they send any email, which is actually pretty fun. I did some digging. We have a dashboard somewhere tells us how much time we've wasted of spammers because they don't know that we're not letting them send emails. They think they're sending them um, so that they can just play around, have fun by themselves. And I think it's like 7,000 days so far we wasted, which is just so fun. Uh, but in general, we're very picky about who can use ConvertKit to send mail. We don't let just anyone use ConvertKit because the deliverability of creators is more important than the revenue in our pockets. I want to talk a little bit more about the numbers behind ConvertKit's deliverability. So like I mentioned, we send over 2 billion emails per month 
and that's growing very quickly. Our delivery rate is over 99.8%, which is very high. <laughs> Thank you. And the average open rate across ConvertKit customers is 45%. You might be wondering, how does this compare with other email providers? It's a great question. Wish I could tell you, but no other email provider is willing to share their stats publicly. But at ConvertKit, we're super confident in our deliverability. So we're happy to share with you our email deliverability numbers. So before I keep going on and on about deliverability, first let's define it. I know it's not a word that's like super common. If I walked up to a stranger on the street and started talking about deliverability, they're not gonna have any idea what I'm talking about probably. Uh, let's talk about what deliverability is not by talking about how my grandma defines deliverability. She was at the one and only Olive Garden with my sister and they have these fancy little screens on the table where you can play games for some reason, uh, check out, order your food. And she points to the screen and says, hey, isn't that what Alyssa does for a living? Um, I have no idea what she meant by that, but that is not deliverability. <laughs> deliverability is simply put, the art of getting your emails into the inbox, which might sound straightforward, but it's actually a beast, which if it weren't, I guess I wouldn't have a job. There are hundreds of factors that will determine whether your email gets placed in the inbox, the spam folder, or bounced all together. I only have 15 minutes with you here today, so I obviously cannot cover it all, but I'm gonna take you through three easy steps you can take to stay out of the spam folder. And if you want more deliverability insights, I'm hosting a workshop tomorrow with Melissa, shout out. Uh, yeah, Alyssa, Melissa, we are the deliverability team at ConvertKit, and um, we would love to see you at our workshop tomorrow. So tip number one, keep your list healthy and engaged. This tip is important because it will boost your sender reputation, which is the most important part of reaching the inbox. In case you didn't know, the domain you use to send email has a reputation, sort of like a credit score. In other words, if deliverability was a Taylor Swift album, it would be the reputation album. This reputation is going to determine whether Gmail places your emails in the inbox, the spam folder, or again, bounces it all together. Fun fact, sources say that Taylor Swift was actually talking about email deliverability when she wrote her songs about reputation. <laughs> Crazy. So back to Sam, she was having a major reputation issue because her list was unhealthy. She had a lot of people marking her emails as spam, we can get into some reasons in the workshop tomorrow, which is called list bombing. I will not do that here on the main stage with you. But a lot of people were marking her emails as spam, and there were a lot of people who just weren't engaging with her emails at all, which caused her reputation to suffer. In case you didn't know, your subscribers are actually the ones determining your reputation. There are positive actions your subscribers can take, which boost your reputation, and then there are negative actions they can take, which hurt your reputation. Love that you're taking photos, that's great. Um, so some positive actions that they can take are replying to your emails, opening your emails, clicking on your emails, that's what we wanna see. Some negative actions they can take are marking your messages spam or just not reading it, keeping it unread. That's what we don't wanna see. Unsubscribes are typically pretty neutral unless you were to just receive a lot of them all at once. So engagement of your list really matters. Here's an example of a list engagement makeup. You can imagine the deep green color is really engaged subscribers, the red color is really unengaged subscribers, and the rest are somewhere in between. And an engagement makeup like this would likely lead to inbox placement. It's a nice, pretty engaged list. But a lot of creators' lists end up looking like this. A lot of unengaged subscribers with some really engaged subscribers as well. And this can happen easily when you never clean your list, you just keep growing and sending and growing and sending over the years, and those unengaged subscribers start to pile up. And a lot of creators don't know that they're doing anything wrong here, but their messages start to go to the spam folder. It's really important to keep your list healthy and engaged. I am excited that I get to share a new product update that happened literally yesterday. Thank you, Mark, if you're here. Um, so there's now a feature in ConvertKit where you can add a condition in your visual automation and set, you know, if the subscriber has opened an email in the last 180 days, and the answer is no, send them your re-engagement sequence. So that is gonna make it way easy. Yeah, I know. I was so excited about this one. So now you can set up list cleaning automatic 
in the background. Um, if you have questions on how to set that up, I would visit the Genius Bar during your coffee breaks and our team would be happy to do that. Also the workshop with Melissa, we can talk you through it. But that's a great way to keep your list engaged. Send them through um, a re-engagement series. And if they don't engage, it's time to let them go. Nathan Berry, cover your ears. But if you remove your unengaged subscribers, it can help reduce your convert kit bill. So there's that. <sighs> Tip number two, encourage your subscribers to reply to your emails. When was the last time you replied to an email? I'm going to guess it was an important email to you. It wasn't from Target or Amazon. A reply signals that the message is important. It isn't just any old bulk promotional message. This is an example of me replying to a creator in my inbox. Dylan Redekop with the Growth Currency newsletter shared in his newsletter that he got a new job. Shout out to Sparkloop. And I responded, congrats on your new role at Sparkloop because he does a great job at fostering a relationship with his subscribers. So I was happy to reply to his newsletter. Replies are a deliverability superpower for creators. You can build connections with your audience in a way that most large companies and brands can't. So I highly recommend you encourage your subscribers to reply to your emails, ask some questions. The result will be a boost to your deliverability and a stronger relationship with your subscribers. Tip number three, be consistent. To illustrate my point on this one, I'm gonna pick on Nathan a little bit more. So I'm on Zoom calls pretty regularly with Nathan. Um, this is what it usually looks like. And I've been working at ConvertKit for over four years now. So I think it's safe to say I've been on hundreds of Zoom calls with Nathan. When I click the link to join in Zoom, I know what to expect. Nathan's usually working in his office. It's a tiny house on his farm. And it's pretty much the same thing every time. Like I know what to expect when I open up that Zoom window. Sometimes he will be on a walking treadmill desk, which is a fun little change, but that's really the only thing that changes from meeting to meeting. So imagine four years of knowing that, and then one random day I show up on a Zoom meeting with Nathan and his hair looks like this. I used AI to do that, so that was really fun. The best way I've used AI so far. <laughs> so if Nathan showed up like this on our one-on-one, -on -one, I would be very surprised. Of course, you know, Nathan can do whatever he wants with his hair. If he wants to do that, that's awesome. But it would just be jarring because it's such a sudden change out of nowhere. So surprisingly, email providers feel the same way about you. Imagine instead, Nathan just had some slow incremental changes over time. He started to grow his hair out a little, he started spiking it up. And then maybe he started adding a little color here and there. If he showed up to work after that one day with this hairstyle, a bright orange spiky haircut, we would all be like, okay, yeah, that's Nathan, that's normal. We wouldn't be so shocked. So Gmail and other mailbox providers, they're feeling the same way about your emails. When they see something that's out of the ordinary for you, they're concerned. They think a spammer must have been involved somehow. So they'll be much more likely to place your emails in the spam folder. So if you decide to change something about your emails, if you wanna change your sending domain, change email providers, AKA move to ConvertKit, um, send to a large list for the first time and so on, be sure to make those changes incrementally over time. Don't just show up out of nowhere with an orange mohawk. Okay, that's all my time with you today. But again, I have a workshop tomorrow with Melissa. I would love to see you there. Um, I'm, you'll also see me around. I'm sure I'll hang out at the Genius Bar a bit. Um, if you have any deliverability questions, you can also text inbox to 33777 and sign up for my email list where I will share way more deliverability resources with you. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of your craft and commerce.